the universe, our home. The immensity to which we turn our gaze. The place where physicists look for answers about the origin of all we know. But how actually do scientific questions about our universe arise? And how do physicists look for answers? A fascinating intellectual adventure now taking place can provide us an example. Let's start our story from Switzerland. Near Geneva, there is CERN, the international laboratory hosting the largest particle accelerator ever built, the LHC. Inside the LHC, beams of protons move at light speed in opposite directions, colliding at specific points. As a consequence, new particles are created and decay, producing traces that are recorded by huge detectors. These traces provide very useful information about the basic components of the universe and of the forces through which they interact. The experiments at CERN involve particle physicists from all over the world. Among them, theoreticians and experimental physicists working at the University of Zurich. Progress in physics relies on a constant uh, interplay between theorists and experimentalists, almost like in an eternal ping-pong match. Theorists formulate ideas and turn them into models to describe nature. These are confronted with real-world data by the experimentalists, sometimes validating these models, sometimes turning up completely unexpected results, which then, are, uh, which then lead the experimentalists to pass the ball back into the camp of theorists who have to refine or reformulate their models and the whole process then starts all over again. This is exactly what is now happening. Since 2014, one of the Forge huge detectors, known as LHCB, started to collect data that looks quite surprising. To understand what exactly has shown up, we have to have a look into the detector. After colliding, protons annihilate producing different kinds of particles. Among them, the so-called B mesons, containing elementary particles called B quarks. B quarks are the main players in our story. They decay almost immediately, transforming themselves into other particles. For instance, into S quarks and a pair of particles called leptons. These leptons pairs can be of three different kinds. One kind is formed by one electron and one anti-electron. One is formed by one muon and one anti-muon, and one by one tau and one anti-tau. LHCB can efficiently detect electrons, anti-electrons, muons, and anti-muons. Physicists expected that the two pairs show up with the same frequency. Instead, one of them, the muon's pair, seems to be rarer than the electron's pair. This is the first anomaly. But B mesons can also decay in a different way, producing C quarks. And again, three different kinds of leptons pairs, of which LHCB can detect well those containing muons and neutrinos, as well as those containing taus and neutrinos. In this case, the pair taus and neutrinos seems to be more frequent than expected, according to current theories. This is the second anomaly. We still have too few measurements to understand if these anomalies are true or not. But if they were confirmed, they would actually be the biggest discovery in particle physics in the last decades. So it is true that LAC already delivered great excitements and a big discovery with the Higgs boson, but we have been hunting the Higgs boson for decades. It was predicted 50 years ago. While what LACB is maybe seeing now is something totally new, totally unexpected, could open new venues and could completely change our basic understanding of the universe. At this stage, physicists must balance hope and reality, enthusiasm and caution. It would not be the first time that a possible important result fades as more data pile up. Such experiments 
are based on probability, not on single events. A single event could be something like what we call a false positive. However, a phenomenon has to occur many times before we start to consider it real. In fact, in order to call something an observation or discovery, the phenomenon has to appear so many times that the probability of it being a false positive has to be smaller than one in three and a half million. So far, LHCB is still far away from having enough data to announce a discovery. What has been observed could turn into nothing seen in few months. Still, theoreticians and experimentalists cannot keep themselves from discussing and speculating. To be really honest, I mean, I would not be completely surprised if some, if some of them fade away. It depends on the model. It depends on the model. There are certain models where I think you can have even 10, 15 percent in RD, RD star. Yeah, but still, I think the, the, the size of the anomaly in the charm sector, I mean, RD star, it should go down a little too. To make the models more natural, it's, it's kind of high, I mean. If these anomalies are real, theoreticians would be forced to include them in a new model describing the universe. And this would lead to a change in the way we think nature works, and in particular about the forces through which particles interact. According to the present theory, in nature there are four elementary forces. The electromagnetic force, responsible for instance of electricity. The strong force, responsible of keeping the quarks together inside the atomic nuclei. The weak force, responsible of radioactivity. And the gravitational force. The reason we are very interested in these anomalies is because they seem to signal the presence of a new microscopic force in nature. And this force has to be very special because it should act in a different manner on particles such as electrons and muons that, on the other hand, behave exactly in the same way under the other well-known forces, the strong, the weak, and the electromagnetic one. And if this phenomenon were confirmed, it would be a, a major discovery. It would tell us that we have to rethink our understanding of the microscopic laws of nature. And my big hope is that if this new force is there, it could help us to understand why different particles have different masses. Our knowledge of physics might be at a turning point, as it happened only a few times since Galileo. But how concrete is this possibility? It is possible that we are seeing the actual onset of a real discovery, but at this point I wouldn't really bet on it yet. Uh, in the next years we will be taking more data and these will be clearly exciting times ahead of us. As it is usually the case, Curiosity, expectations, and even excitement need hard work to hatch in an awaited with bated breath achievement. To confirm or to refute these anomalies, we need to analyze more data. The good news is that we have these data. We have been collecting it with our experiment over the last two to three years. So the pain now is in the analysis. This is a long procedure in which there can be no shortcuts. We have to be as thorough and as careful as possible. Let's now look forward. Optimistically, if the anomaly is uh, confirmed, what do we expect next? What should we do? Well, the answer again is more data. We will need to collect and analyze yet more data, and then the game will be to look for similar effects in other decay processes involving different particles to try and build together a coherent pattern which we can then match against predictions from our theorist friends. And only then we will have a deeper understanding of what is happening. The good news is that LHCB might soon not be alone in its search. The LHCB anomalies are raising a lot of interest, and in fact, there are many experiments, both at CERN and elsewhere, they are starting to investigate them. This will require a few years, but is a very interesting research, and I'm looking forward to see new results. Time will tell how this intellectual adventure will end. But one thing is sure, whatever result will be provided by the experiments, it will give rise to new questions. And a generation of researchers will keep looking for answers, expanding our knowledge of how the universe works.
What also makes this moment so exciting is that uh, these anomalies are um, driving us to move ahead in a number of different directions. We don't know yet where will it bring us. However, it pushes us to overcome many other challenges in uh, techniques, in instrumentations, general understanding. So the unbelievable thing for me is that out of the several fields in particle physics and the many, many different LHCB analyses, it happens to be my research which is showing something new. This makes me very lucky indeed, and I have a hard time to believe that I am this lucky. I spent most of my PhD working on the anomalies that were seen at the LXTB experiment, and I can say that it has been a very uh, exciting and also very challenging experience. There's so much work going on right now in this field, and what we did already led to a better understanding of our detector and also to the development of innovative analysis strategies that are literally opening new possibilities and paving the way for uh, the next generation of measurements in this field. There are only a few times in a research career that can actually be part of something that can completely revolutionize your field. And this is it. And this endeavor to understand whether this set of anomalies are indeed true or not by itself is just fascinating. This year we worked on the construction of a model able to address B anomalies. Sometimes building a model feels a bit like being on a roller coaster. One moment nothing seems to work, but then the next one you come up with a good idea and new possibilities open up. This is challenging, but it's also very exciting. These anomalies are fun. They make me feel like an explorer heading to uncharted territory, and I'm lucky to take part of this adventure. These anomalies are forcing us to think deeper, to go beyond some basic principles that we have for granted. I'm eager to know how this story will develop, but ensure that, no matter the outcome, we will be wiser by the end of this journey. As a PhD student working on analysis of the decays of B measles, I have to say I'm very happy to be part of this collective effort to shed light on the cause of these puzzling anomalies, to be part of this exciting story. I cannot wait to see its next chapter. Cut!